This is the seventh video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. As part of our discussion about communication and informed consent, I wanted to make a brief mention about responding to errors in an appropriate way. Sometimes things will go wrong, and it's important to think about how you will handle those situations before you're faced immediately with making decisions about it. Probably the, the most important piece of this is communicating in a caring and effective way with the owners of the animal involved. So these are just, to me, these are very common sense things to think about, but I think it also is a good reminder to everybody to think about these things in advance so that when an emergency situation or a bad situation presents itself, you react appropriately. So first, what are the, some of the things you should do? I think probably the most important thing is to remember that your job is to take care of the patient. That needs to be your top priority, even if things are going wrong. Maybe the patient has bitten somebody, Maybe the patient is responding poorly to the treatment that you're providing. Maybe you have determined you've misidentified or misdiagnosed the patient. Uh, whatever the situation is, remember that your first priority is take care of the patient. Second thing to do is to compose yourself. Uh, remember that as the doctor, you are the professional in this situation. You need to control and compose your emotions so that you can communicate and investigate effectively. It is helpful if you need to provide in or conduct any investigation to try to make sure you have the facts at your fingertips or understand what the facts are before you talk to the client. Now that's not always possible. You don't always have time. Uh, and quite frankly, people aren't always honest when they tell you what happened. But I think it is best to take a minute to make sure that you are composed and to make sure you have at least made some effort to determine what happened and what went wrong. Next step is to disclose the event to the client. Now, nobody wants to do this and it's never pleasant, but that is very critical that you sit down and make this disclosure to the client. We'll talk next about how you make that disclosure on the next slide. If it's appropriate, think about making an apology. Now, remember, there's different types of apologies. Okay, I can say, I'm sorry this happened to your pet. I can say, I'm sorry this mistake happened. Or I can say, I'm sorry that I made this mistake. Now, those are different ways to apologize, but they are heard very differently. Uh, certainly the most effective way to apologize is to say that I am sorry that I made this mistake. Even if it was made by another person on your team, it, I think is helpful for you to accept responsibility as the doctor for the mistake made by people that you were supervising. Now, sometimes it is, uh, uh, or, or some professionals are concerned about making apologies because they are concerned that by making an apology, they are admitting that they are liable for the bad result. Most states, if not all states, have adopted statutes that make it clear that making this kind of apology is not an admission of liability. And part of the reason for that is, is the states found out as they investigated malpractice cases is that many times all the client or the patient really wanted was an apology. And if the doctor had owned up to making a mistake and made an appropriate apology, there never would have been a malpractice case. So as a result, the states have been pretty efficient. Now, not all states have this rule in place. And if you have malpractice insurance, an easy thing to do before you talk to the client is to contact your insurance company and confirm whether they will allow you to make a, an apology to the client. Um, and, and, and they should be aware very easily or very quickly about what the state's rules are about making that kind of apology. 
if it's appropriate and there is an additional or, or the patient will receive additional care, discuss that plan of care with the client. Uh, be accountable. If the client may be upset. The client may be upset with you. The client may be angry with you. Let them vent. Listen to them. Uh, and accept responsibility where appropriate for what happened uh, in your treatment of the animal. Lastly, and, and again, this is something that should be discussed only in appropriate situations. If a mistake happened, you may want to share with the client how you plan to prevent this kind of mistake from happening in the future. Again, when they go back and research why malpractice cases get filed, they find that a lot of those cases get filed uh, because the doctor's not communicating to the, the client, but sometimes those cases are filed because the client wants to send a message to make sure this doesn't happen to other people in the future. As a doctor, you can help prevent that emotional response from the client if you confirm or discuss with the client some additional steps or additional procedures that will be implemented in your office so that this kind of bad result does not happen again in the future. So now let's talk about how you make this disclosure. Again, most of this is very much common sense to me. But if it's not common sense to you, make note of it and remember these things. First thing is choose a quiet place. Don't go sit down in a waiting room with a lot of people coming and going and a lot of people able to overhear the conversation and share this bad news with a client. Try to take them to a quiet office or a quiet meeting room or a conference room where there aren't any distractions. Uh, make sure that there aren't any distractions for the doctor. Turn off your cell phone. Not on silent. Turn it off. Make sure your staff understands that they should not interrupt this conversation unless it is an absolute emergency. Uh, and needing to go home is not an emergency. You know, part of the reason I say this is important is I've had many conversations with people that when I think the conversation is very important, and the person picks up their cell phone to check their messages or starts responding to a text on their cell phone in the middle of our conversation. That sends me a message that they aren't listening and that they don't care. If you're sharing bad news with a client, you do not want to send the message that you don't care enough about it to give 100% of your attention to this conversation. If possible, start with a warning to help cushion the bad news. Don't just come out immediately and say your pet died. You know, start out with a, a with a I call it a throat clearing device where you simply say something like I have difficult news to share with you and, and kind of give the client a chance to prepare for the news before you deliver the bad news point blank. You know, as we communicate, part of the communication are the words that we use, but a big part of our communication is nonverbal. The tone of voice that we use, the uh, physical uh, uh, body language that we use. Make eye contact with your client. Even though you're sharing bad news and even though it may be tempting to try to look at the floor or to look away, Making eye contact with your client sends a very clear message that you care and it also helps you evaluate how they are receiving this news. It's also important to sit at the client's level. Sometimes in treatment rooms or in, in situations where there aren't enough chairs, the doctor has a tendency to stand over the client and talk down to them. That is exactly the wrong body language to send this message to the client. Make sure you're sitting at the client's level so that you are looking them eye to eye on a level playing field and not trying to show your superiority over the client. Also pay attention to the nonverbal cues that the client may send. You know, if the client needs a moment, be sure you give them a moment to compose themselves. You may have already had several minutes, if not longer, to compose yourself and, and think about this conversation. 
the client has not, has not had that opportunity. So think about the situation and if they need some additional time, give them some time. If they are responding to you angrily, if they're giving you an angry stare, give them a chance to vent. Uh, sometimes that may be all that they need. Uh, facilitate discussion and questions. You know, don't just walk in and say, I've got really bad news, your pet died. Sorry. Spend some time with the client discussing what happened. Give the client enough time to think about whether they may have questions and to answer those questions. And make it clear to the client that if they need to contact you in the future, they have an opportunity to contact you and that you will respond to their telephone calls. Of course, if there's going to be ongoing care of the animal, part of this discussion needs to be when will we talk again, when will we provide that ongoing care for the client, for the patient. So I think, you know, again, this is mostly common sense, but thinking about how to share bad news and how to explain the bad news in a way that minimizes the, the risk of, of malpractice can go a long way to protecting yourself. It's wonderful to think that you will never make a mistake. It's wonderful to think that you will never have a bad result. But the reality is if you work with a number of animals for any length of time, you will make mistakes and you will have bad results. And you need to be able to communicate those situations in a caring and effective manner with your clients.